thanks so much for staying there. The biggest story this morning is the Black Stars uh, participation at AFCON 2019 and the fallout yesterday the sports and youth, youth and sports minister was before parliament 4.5 million dollars uh, the BNFT says government spent 4.5 million dollars on black stars failed 2019 AFCON campaign uh, if we take a look at the uh, daily guide we blew 4.5 million dollars on black stars that's how it put it um, Ghana spent $4.564 million on AFCON. That's the Ghanaian Times. So that story gets a lot of uh, uh, page there on almost all the papers I have here. Uh, apart from that, Daily Graphic has Parliament to withdraw Vigilantism Act and NMC fought multimedia group over militia video. University of Education, Winneba has only one vice chancellor. The uh, education minister there talking and probe discover violence. President direct Western Regional Police. Those are some of the stories I have. My guest to do the talking this morning, Deputy uh, Director of Communications at NADMO, a member of the NPP's communication team, Mr. George Kweju is here. Good morning. And hope you're doing great. I'm good. Thanks so much for it's joining us. Director of Communications. The, oh, Director of Communications, yes. not Deputy Director. Yeah. I'm grateful the for the correction. Director of Communications at NATMO, Mr. George Kwejo AEC. Grateful for your time. A member of Parliament for the uh, Ududududu <coughs> constituency, a member of the NDC. Good morning, too. Hope mm -hmm. you are doing great. I'm blessed. Thanks for your time. <coughs> Let's start this conversation. Now, the, the story is now well known. Um, President Nana Kufado. It's been touring, uh, but yesterday the sports minister uh, told Parliament that government spent a total of $4.5 million on the Black Stars 2019 Africa Cup of Nations campaign, uh, which the Minister for Youth and Sports uh, considered was a below par performance by the senior national team, presenting a statement on the floor of Parliament on Ghana's preparation and participation in the 2019 AFCON, which came off in Egypt and was won by Algeria. Mr. Siama noted that the expenditure was made from a budget of $6.3 million, with the team getting knocked out in the round of 16 to Tunisia. The remaining $1.7 million, according to the minister, will be returned to the state. The breakdown uh, of the expenditure I'm sure you might have seen it. Airfare, 924,168. Uh, uh, yes, that's in dollars. Per diem, players, 187,000. Uh, technical, 129,600. Uh, additional technical, 90,000 plus. Winning bonus, 965,000 plus. A winning bonus for the technical team, 347,000 plus. A winning bonus technical additional, 177,000. Accommodation, 1,143,000 plus. Feeding, 419,000 plus. Match tickets, 41,000 plus. Medicals, 44,000 plus. Visa fees, 8,000 plus. Internal transport, 43,000 plus. And incidentals, 42,000 plus. All these are in dollars. That's the story. The minister however said that the breakdown will be released later on. Ni, let me start this with you. We, we do not have the breakdown. Uh, we're only told that it will come later. It, can we make some sense out of this or the, or, or the figure, even though we don't have the, 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 the breakdown, so the number of people were there? Well, thank you very much, and let me say good morning to our cherished viewers, and also to say good morning to my, the good people of Ododododio Consuency. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me take the opportunity, and also to wish all parliamentary aspirants um, the best of luck as we go through the vetting today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, we hope that uh, all these will be incident-free, and we shall go through successfully, and the best people will be selected and will be given the permission to contest on the ticket of the NDC in the coming 2020 elections. Um, why are we here? We are here because God Almighty gave us the opportunity to correct the wrongs after the Brazil 2014 tournament when we set up the Jamaica Commission. We spent millions of CDs, especially very, very vital airtime to broadcast the commission 
Why did we do that? So that every Ghanaian mm. will be able to understand the issues and also appreciate what the commission will be coming out with. We were blessed to have very experienced and knowledgeable people to sit there and listen. And at the end of it all, a report was written. The report gave very sensitive directions as far as our uh, financing of activities involving football in particular is concerned. I was privileged to have been the Minister for Youth and Sports. I had the opportunity of reading through the report and I thought that the report was a very wonderful uh, step towards minimizing and cutting down some avoidable costs as far as financing our football was concerned. Let's also understand one thing. Ghana is a country of sports and not a country of football. Mm. And as such, whatever budget and whatever sports, uh, whatever amount of money is given to sports, is meant to be used to promote, manage, and develop all sporting disciplines, and not only football. So the Jabaipa Commission gave us the opportunity to be able to draw out lessons in how to minimize costs and save money in order to also make sure that we become sensitive to the needs of other sporting disciplines. Um, let me say this. What happened, what the presentation yesterday to me was a sham. Very poor uh, report. This is all the report the minister presented to parliament. If you look at the report, the first two pages basically were narrations of what happened before they went to the World Cup and all those things. The meeting with the president, the response of the captain and the rest. And then the third page, um, and the last we virtually talked about the expenditure. It is a report. Um, two, if you look at the Jamepe Commission report and the White Paper issued, two main issues were looked at. Mm. Financing football, bonuses, payments and the rest, and how we can reduce budget. It was a great opportunity for us to be able to go a step further. Because at that time, the budget and the winning bonuses were becoming too astronomical, unbearable for the country. And the demands of players uh, was becoming almost like the, the, the sort of sword that they used to slaughter football officials and also hold the nation to ransom vis-a-vis -vis what happened in Brazil. And the whole issue about Brazil brought Ghana into the international limelight as to poor management of our system. So the JMP Commission presented us the opportunity to be able to correct this. Mm -hmm. So the issue of allowances, bonuses was taken a look at. And the Commission said that we should restructure our payments a system, the allowances and bonuses, in order to make it conducive and make it more, uh, let me say, uh, um, bearable to government. Mm -hmm. Because he saw that if we don't change the way we, we structured our bonuses and allowances, the rest for footballers, um, it will get to a time when this nation will not be able to stand mm. the pressure. And the players could uh, let us do anything at all we want to do in order to, uh, 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 in order to satisfy their demand. And the nation, if the nation cannot, satisfy that demand, it will be a problem for us. The other issue has to do with the management of supporters. The commission saw that the issue of supporters is one of the difficult issues, the expenditure, totally unnecessary. And sometimes the way and manner these supporters are even uh, uh, ferried, transported, you know, to such tournaments uh, wasn't good. So the Jamaica Commission said that it must totally be avoided. Mm. But if it must be done, it must be done prudently, transparently, and openly. So you could see that that encouraged the amalgamation of the various and the numerous sporting supporters unions we had into the National Supporters Union mm. so that it will reflect everybody. Because people thought that the system was given opportunity for political patronage. These two issues came up. I was a minister when we were preparing towards the 2017 AFCON. Further, I didn't, we didn't stay in office to uh, 
uh, let me execute it. So we plan various things. And the issue of supporters was one of the things I was very strong on, that no compromise. We're not going to compromise or understand. I believe sincerely as a country, we must move forward and do the right things. It was an opportunity for us to use that as a basis to tell people that this unnecessary expenditure in a country where people are still sitting on the floor, in classrooms, in a country where we cannot have water, in a country where people do not have hospitals, people have difficulty in having access to hospitals, we cannot spend this sort of money for frivolously. It's, it's frivolous expenditure to me to just carry people who virtually have nothing to bear on the activity. And the issue is that we don't do that with other sporting disciplines. If the Ghana team goes to the Olympic Games and the boxing team is going to fight to bring us medal, which they have done almost all the time, who and who goes there to cheer them up? If the athletes are going to run, who are, and who and who are there to cheer them up? If the national hockey team is going to play, why don't we send supporters to go and cheer them up? Mm. If that is the only incentive for people to pro pro perform. So we saw that this issue of supporters doesn't really add up. It doesn't really make any impact. Unfortunately for me, uh, this government has taken the country back to those ancient days which the German Fair Commission tried to correct. Um, yesterday, the minister presented the budget. We asked for this budget before they went to the Cup of Nations. It wasn't presented. Yesterday, he had opportunity to do it. Mm. And he told us that the country spent 4.5 out of 6.3, and then they are returning one, as if we are supposed to clap for him. I looked through the budget, and I asked myself, let's take issue of winning bonus alone. We paid 965.405 as winning bonuses. Ghana won one match. One match. If you go through the mathematics, I'm not very good at mathematics. If you divide 965.405 among the 23 players, it means that each player received $41,974.130. Are we saying we paid $41,000? dollars to our blaster players for winning one match according to the report of the minister at least the, 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 I mean, we have about 17 technical uh, no no we, are we have of winning bonus technical okay and then winning bonus additional technical okay so if so this is for players. for players he said winning bonus players nine hundred sixty five thousand dollars if you add a winning bonus technical an additional technical you are talking about almost 1.5 million dollars winning bonus alone for one match so definitely the minister need to tell us more than this i also i took a little and look at accommodation for who calf fifa and the bodies under such circumstance the local organizing committee of the host nation provides accommodation for, for players, team and technical, team and technical people. people, not only team and technical, and even officials. Okay, a team always have about five officials who are registered. So this accommodation is for who? And we spend one point one four three million cities uh, dollars, million dollars on accommodation for who? Unless the minister want to tell me that this is expenditure for accommodation when they went on a training tour in Dubai. Suddenly, said it in Cluto, Dubai, that will be, Egypt. That, that, that will be unheard of. Where? Mm. Where did they sleep? Jumeirah? The seven-star Jumeirah Hotel, that's where they slept? And how much did they pay a day? Which rooms? Suites? The suites that cost $10,000 or $7,000 a night? Is that where they slept? Because that's the only way we can arrive at this figure. Somebody needs to explain this to okay. us. Okay, wrap up for me. Let me go to Mr. Easy for reaction. And then we talk about feeding. On such days, unless this figure there, $419,000, is a feeding in Dubai, the training tour. If it's not a feeding in Dubai, and if it is feeding in Dubai, we will need receipts to know what sort of food were they eating. Match tickets. The team... The technical team, the match officials of the normalizing committee officials who will go are always given match tickets by the host LOC. Mm. That's what is done. That's the practice. 
So if we spend $41,000 on my tickets, who did they go to? And for who? The, the issue of visa also, we have a visa-free agreement with Egypt. So how did we pay $8,000 for visa? So this is for Dubai. Yes, the minister said this is for Dubai. Dubai is visa on arrival. Dubai is visa on arrival. So what are we talking about? Medicals, $44,000 for medicals. Right, we need answers. Okay. The final one, quickly. Right, quickly right. Internal, transportation, Internal transportation, 43000 Internal transportation, 43000 The question I'll ask is that when it's a tournament, the local organizing committee provides bus to chauffeur-driven vehicles to the technical team and to the management. So who were these things done for? But let me say this quickly. Almost 400 and almost 400, let me use 400 supporters were sent to Egypt. Supporters and journalists. I have information. And, and members of parliament and officials of the Not Ministry members of, of parliament. Europe. Members of okay. the select committee. Select committee. Yes. I'm sorry. Select committee. Yeah. Thanks for the correction. And then officials of the youth I, and sports ministry. I'm talking about supporters. For About 400 supporters and journalists were sent. The supporters were given $50 per day. You have, you have, I have uh, information to, to that. Yes. That? Yes. 50 yes. CDs per day. $50. $50 per day. If you calculate, multiply that by 400, you are talking about almost $200,000 per day. By two weeks, you are talking almost about $2.8 million. The supporters who were taken, assuming the tickets, the flight ticket is only $600. That's assumption. The lowest, I took the lowest. But I know some of them were pay, paid, the pay, ticket valued was $1,000. But I'm using the average, $600. Times 400 is another $2.4 million on ticketing. If you add up to this one, you are talking about $5.2 million, which is different from the 4.5. So, we are talking around $11.7 million on AFCON. I see. But people want to keep information to that they don't give us the details. Let me pause you there. Because I, the supporters... I, I, I'll come back to you. We'll, 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 we'll touch be, more be, on that. Be, before okay. I, I speak, uh, yes. I think his calculations were not right. Uh, yes, uh, you, the you get a chance times 400 people mm. is 20,000, not 2 million as he's quoting. Okay, that's four hundred fifty dollars. Yes, that's fifty dollars. That's two hundred thousand dollars. Yes, no, it's twenty thousand four hundred people. That's what you said. Times fifty. Yes. Okay, that's and not I, they, were giving four, they were giving four hundred dollars pocket money. No, you said yeah, four hundred people. Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars yes. pocket money. Yeah. Times four hundred. Okay, that's twenty thousand. So, so. so Calculate that one. Okay. You yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll okay, calculate times, the calculation. Times, so times, the figures are four hundred. Okay. 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 Yes. No, okay. Ah, okay. Times times four hundred. These are, are nowhere near uh, the figures. Assume figures. So you let's let's hold on. Listen, listen yeah. to me carefully. Yeah. If you say twenty dollars, it may amount to twenty thousand dollars a day. Yes. Times fourteen days. Yes, that's what it is. Times four hundred people. Yes, that's. And then how much? How much would that make? Good. So two point eight. Okay. All right. These are assumed figures. So let's leave it at that. Judge, come in. So he's raising. Concerns. Yeah. The key yeah. thing is that we do not have the details yet. Yes. So, what do we do? How do we uh, discuss this? Good, uh, Bright. Uh, uh, thank you. Good morning to your viewers mm -hmm. and good morning to Honorable uh, Neil and Teva and the poor. Uh, one of the sports commentators we admired growing up uh, is an honor and privilege to be sitting by him. Uh, one, it is said, by that the devil uh, is in the details. Uh, um, Yesterday, the Honorable Minister had the opportunity to be in Parliament and to present a brief as uh, the Honorable is put out here. He has them here. The Honorable Minister again went further to say uh, they will break them down uh, later. And I believe it, he, he will be part of the committee uh, that will look into the details. And I would be glad if, if we get uh, those details. And then when we come back, he mm -hmm. can speak authoritatively uh, to why those details are whether uh, they, they are acceptable or not, because he has the uh, privilege of having sat in that seat as a minister. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was the minister when we went to Brazil. 
No. Uh, okay, no, he 2014. Was not. Okay. He was not. Okay. Uh, so, but he's had the privilege there, being there uh, as a minister. So he can speak authoritatively. I was happy when he was uh, touching the details, taking us from Jam Affairs Committee and the things we should uh, have had the benefit of hindsight and, and not to repeat uh, going forward. But uh, having said that, it's good uh, Ghanaians are speaking or trying to interrogate the details of the budget uh, that was taken to uh, AFCON uh, in Egypt. Uh, that is part of property and accountability. We is the taxpayers' money, and so if you go to expend them, come and account to us. And where better to do that than the uh, people's representatives' uh, place? So the Honourable Isaac Isiama uh, came that they had a budget of 6.3. You know, remember, football is the passion of the Ghanaian people. Uh, all of us are very passionate when it comes to football. And to be honest, before then, uh, people were pushing for the government to do everything everything to ensure that the team uh, is well resourced and prepared for the tournament, right? Uh, with Songu and Co had reservations about <laughs> the ability <laughs> of the team uh, to deliver. But uh, having said that, uh, if you look at the brief that has been given as, as retreated by the Honorable uh, former Minister, uh, some of them, as he said about the winning bonus, we, we actually won only one match. So uh, if you're saying it's uh, 920 something thousand and he, 965. 965, breaking it down, meaning 41,000 uh, per uh, player, then we need further interrogation. I was happy when you were trying to bring in uh, the team, the technical team, but he went further to say they had their bonuses also uh, stated in the uh, uh, itemized uh, uh, this thing. So I, I, I'm less, not cutting in, but even yeah. this one, there is some explanation that well, we want one match, but <laughs> we move from one leg Play. to another leg. Yes. So that could have uh, added to the cost of how much we paid. Possibly. The, the, the but players. possibly. That, he he the has been there. He <laughs> has been there. He this has paid. <laughs> he, okay. has, he has made okay. those payments before. And he okay. understands the processes of the payment. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why I don't want to uh, uh, argue or take him on on that because he's uh, an experienced person when it comes to these payments. Mm -hmm. You've come a long way. You remember Malamises mm -hmm. days and bonus matters. Uh, to this point. And so when matters of this nature come up, I would rather that the minister provides the detail at the committee level. Then uh, we can properly uh, interrogate uh, this whole uh, issue of AFCON because uh, we are not going to stop going for the African tournament. Okay, we will wish Black Star qualifies uh, in the next two years to go and represent Ghana. Uh, they hold aloft the flag of Ghana. Okay, and so our players' ability to deliver is important. Uh, again, he came in when he was putting figures out. I was looking at okay, it's honorable not looking at the supporters, and so I was happy when he finally arrived there. And and we took supporters to the place, okay. And I was happy accommodation. They were all of them were given accommodation it's by the state. Ah, you get it. But do we leave our players alone there? Uh, Langa Bell and Co. Your own Langa Bell and Co. shouldn't be there to support the team, okay. It should be a position taken by parliament that henceforth the first committee says we shouldn't do those things. We shouldn't but use state money. State money. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so we do that. We good. Should use state, state money. Yes. Or if, if we would do it, there's a way we ought to do it. Mm -hmm. Can the state then decide through the ministry to get sponsors to come and support getting uh, individual supporters to the place? Because fortunately we have supported union. Okay, very well organized uh, supporters. You know, he said they've been integrated, right? Yes. Because we had different, different ones. Right. And their presence there is important to inspire, motivate the players to deliver on the field. Mm -hmm. You get it? It's very encouraging when you, as a player, you are on the field and then you see people cheering you up. Okay, it gives you that double energy uh, to deliver for your nation. You should tell me it's not true. It is very true. You get it? So their presence is important. Okay. But then, going forward, as the committee says, did we actually use state funds for these ones? It will be in the details, you know, going forward. And so I want us to, uh, as for air ticket and all those, these are verifiable. 
you get it. You get the uh, 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 agents that lifted the, the players or to the place. You can easily get this. So parliament can easily uh, cross-check these uh, details before, once the minister is given this, uh, the Honorable Neil Ante is in a better position uh, to make checks before the, uh, the minister comes before the, uh, uh, the sports committee uh, mm -hmm. to give the details. So that's, uh, for now, right, I will say let's uh, be a bit cautious in, in, you know, having reservations of these figures. You know, you may say uh, it's huge, but uh, 6.3 budget, I, I stand to be corrected. We've seen uh, instances where budget was given and all was exhausted. In the past, I know I'm not trying to bring equalization, no, mm. but uh, and also not to say praise the Lord for, for having a reserve of 1.7. But what you are, you were given 6.3, uh, with anticipation that we're going, going all out to the finals, in it, yeah. Okay, it, and we didn't well, even okay, I, I will, I will budgets you, will be coming as I, we I go along, that is yeah. Even, that is even the most strange aspect of the discussion. Okay. What, no. When you come no, in, no, no, I'd okay. him to land. Yeah. Oh, no, he's okay. Yeah. He said, he yeah. said, yeah. he's yeah. When you come in, then, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. He's yeah. Is it right? <laughs> because yeah. I, if you, you see, I don't really like that. I wanted to ask him Yes, that. yes. You see, this Jamefe Commission thing, yeah. it was to, to, to put us back on track yeah. of what we yeah. felt we were doing wrong. Yeah. But the recommendations, again, are not being respected to. Uh, is that not worrying? Very worrying. Very worrying. And and uh, we, when when the minister appears before them, I think it should be one of the key this thing. I believe the minister might have read the report. A white paper was issued, okay, the position right. of the state uh, when the commission finished with their work. And all of us expect, in fact, I've had uh, uh, sports presenters always referring to that report. <laughs> and calling on the minister and other key people in the sports sector, uh, asking whether they've read that report. Mm. And, and I think and I believe they've read it, but they, there's the need for us to hold them to the strict implementation uh, of that. And so if we have a report that is to be uh, a serve as a roadmap for us going forward, and not to repeat uh, some of the mistakes of the past, Brazil where 20, Brazil, you buy coconut for twenty dollars and all that. Mm. Uh, forgive me, I'm not trying to. <laughs> you get it. So not to repeat these things, and then we see that after Egypt, uh, similar things have happened. I'm not saying they've happened, mm. but similar. We see resemblance of such things. It should be worrying, right? And and we need to uh, hold the minister and other people who are supposed to be in charge of the team uh, responsible for some of these things. Okay, so for you, we should wait for the details. Yes, we should. Well, wait uh, is it details. right? I don't. I don't really need any details. What I can say is that um, if the minister says they budgeted six point three, it's yeah. even unwholesome to me. You were going to, if you look at the budget and expenditure so far, up to the 116th yeah. level, if we had won, calculating the, by, by the winning bonuses they were paying, if we had won the next, the, that much, we will have had another expenditure, that is the winning bonus, mm. Mm, to the players, the technical team, and the additional technical staff. Yeah. That one alone would have taken us to almost about $900,000. You understand? So the balance of 1.1. 1 .1. Yeah. So it means that the minister himself, before he left here, if he had a budget of 6.3, it means that he didn't know, and he didn't believe that we could get to semifinals. You understand me? You're basing your fact on the, the, the yeah, figures, figures he yeah. submitted. Yeah. Okay. And the balance which was left, the balance was, I think the balance is about 1.9. 1.7. 1.7. 1.7. Yeah. If you calculate, if you, we won one match. Yeah. And the winning bonus was nine hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. That is only players. If you add to the technical people, you, you, we are almost one point seven. Yeah. So it means that so if we have won that match, if we have wiped out the whole budget, what will have happened okay. the next match? Is there not room for sending additional but, but, funding? But that's, he's telling us that his total budget was six point three. It means that from day one, it wasn't we, enough. We, yeah, it wasn't enough. It's either. He is understating the actual budget or some information is missing. Okay. And we must look out for it. Two, the other issue has to do, seriously, I, um, I, I want to ask. I want to ask this question. Where did the money come from? Because Parliament approved a budget for the Ministry of Food Sports, <laughs> mm. which includes 
according to a statement of the budget preparation and uh, for cup of nations you understand if you take out the 43 million that was the total budget for the ministry of Defense sports you take out compensation which was 18 million we are talking about about 20 something million left is that what was used to finance this if not okay where did the ministry get the money from Ghanaians deserve to know Ghanaians will have to be told but Two. Honorable, isn't it possible to get the six point something million out of the remaining 21 million no 21 million cities divide, uh, just do the calculation it, it, it will get convert to, to dollars uh, yeah. it will, it will get to that. Okay. so we need to know the other issue which is worrying to me as I sit here is the fact that other disciplines are there if we have depleted the budget how are we going to finance the other sporting disciplines yeah. this is half a year other sporting disciplines have programs are we not killing the other sporting disciplines as a country is that what we are doing god has given somebody talent which the person is nurturing and we are using our own knowledge and intention willfully killing that person's opportunity for that person to become somebody recently somebody came to this country having been the world champion in, in, in um, wrestling wrestling yeah, yeah. you understand yeah. he's put ghana on the map boxing has put ghana on the map now as i'm talking to you now the boxers are preparing for all africa games it's one discipline that has given us more laurels than any other discipline what are we doing so this issue the probing we shall probe and we've indicated the minority we're going to ask more questions from our press conference tomorrow on this issue one of the issues i want to ask is that why do we go to a tournament the total returns from this tournament was six hundred thousand dollars in case we had one no six hundred thousand dollars where, where okay. we got to where we got to in but fact in case emotional satisfaction no. emotional <laughs> satisfaction <laughs> well you you I want to cost, you, you want to quantify that yes <laughs> when everyone is excited the drinking mass are yes. filled <laughs> people are playing. the total uh, winning bonus for the winner yeah. Yeah. so um Algeria which one picked yeah. 4.5 4. million 5, okay that is even well, below uh, our budget <laughs> in the first place so are we uh, do you say that as a country we're going to always enter into a venture at the back of our mind, we know we are going to make a loss. And then we go into it and make a loss. In 2017, our total budget was 4.4. Uh, we expended 3.7. We got to the semifinals and got a returns of almost about 1.9 million. Even that, I will not encourage. Seriously, I think that the philosophy I had when I was a minister, people didn't understand me. Look, if there's a budget for sports, it's a budget for sports. Not for football. Share it for everybody. If sports need additional money, they should seek sponsorship. <laughs> you understand me? Good. They should seek sponsorship. They say outside support. Football is basically business now. Yeah. And so go out there and look for your support and look for your money. We cannot continue to deprive other sporting disciplines. Volleyball, hockey, all these disciplines. They are right to the cake. And, and virtually give everything to footballers. Look, is it not insulting for me to be told that before that footballer will play at his, mid, at his maximum, will be motivated to play, some people have to be transported to the field to cheer him. I'm surprised. That's first one no, yourself. I'm surprised, <laughs> <first man>. Okay. <laughs> And I'll tell you, that's your view. Yeah, the issue, that's right. The issue is that <laughs> I know on record that we have close to almost about 100,000 Ghanaians living in Egypt. In Egypt. Could, what is the, uh, the Ghanaian embassy in Egypt doing? Couldn't we have mobilized Ghanaians in Egypt? If they've been at a lower cost, even if a Ghanaian is in Alexandria, to be transported through financing to the embassy mm. to have those people present to chair our team why do we have to transport with all the risk transport people from accra to egypt at the taxpayers expense meanwhile that teacher in the classroom doesn't need any more motivation 
He doesn't need the parents and city association to come and clap, stand there and clap for him every day in order to teach the children better. So, so for you, you, you regret the past. I mean, you're talking about Brazil and others. And so the key thing is to chart a new path. It is not only Brazil. This, several this thing, several things. Germany, who first time. Yes. You know what happened? Look, so as a country, we must learn. It's opportunity for us to be able to right the wrong. And if we're not learning and we're still going back to the old ways, then we have a problem as a country. Let me pick Mr. Yusuf's thought. So it, 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 let's, we should chart a new path. Yeah. Who has to lead that? Well, definitely one, the government uh, must lead that. And the government's representative uh, or chief servant there is the sports minister. Mm -hmm. And then should be ably assisted by the uh, parliamentary select committee on, on, on youth and sports. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it still youth and sports or yes. sports? Yes, yes. youth and sports. Youth sports and culture. Youth and culture, yeah. So they must uh, give the minister the backing to provide the needed leadership for that. And then should also hold the, the minister accountable uh, when it comes to, and they should have the Jamefe uh, report as, as their blueprint to guide us on the path that we are taking to sanitize uh, the sports uh, sector, especially when it comes to uh, tournaments and then expenditure relating to such tournaments. Okay, and then when the budget, uh, I would want to agree because this, I don't think this is the first time uh, there's been complaints of not seeing budget before the tournament. Yes. You get it. And, and uh, some time ago, it was a major media uh, hullabaloo. So if we can, going forward, the budget must be brought before the committee. Uh, of Parliament uh, on sports mm. to be perused or properly analyzed before we are back on the tournament. If if we can get the members of Parliament uh, to keep it uh, uh, to discuss it in camera uh, without letting, letting the, the public, you know. public know that they should know what we are taking there. And in fact, the experience and, and advice can guide uh, us to know how to. Uh, to go about the whole thing uh, right uh, instead of just keeping it uh, shrouding it in secrecy and then go come back there we have uh, some of the issues that otherwise would have been avoided uh, if we had gone to uh, the parliamentary uh, committee so that's important again he raised an issue about the budget not being sufficient uh, but fortunately we are going to have a media review right mm -hmm. and so the totality of the sports sector uh, considering other sports. Uh, maybe uh, some suggestions can be made that we get additional. I will resist this. <laughs> I will resist it. I will uh, resist it with all the uh, to support. But, but that means that if you resist it, you will be depriving the other and sports, sports of uh, funding. Yeah. The minister should go and look for the money to for, 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 no, for but, the other right, sports. Right. You remember, no, right. you remember mm. sometime per GMPC was funding uh, yeah. the Black that, Stars. That one, I was yes. against yes. it. Because Some the money, people felt the money it's still was sports the development. Yes. Mm. It's a it's, corporate yeah. social yeah. responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. cannot discriminate yeah. against the yeah. other sport. In GNPC's money is for Ghana sports. Yeah. But so I was against the fact that it is being channeled only to the black to the blasters. No, and not, right, not even right. to the other. is not being fair. You know, right. it's, it's, some of these things are done proportionately. You get it. You can say the funding for table tennis or ping pong mm -hmm. should be the same as that for uh, football. football. I know he will agree. It can be so. Okay. You get no, it. But this and there's swimming and other. No, we no, are no, trying to this develop one, such sports. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so for now, as we go in, mm -hmm. we get the football. That's the passion of the nation. And then we begin to get um, very good budget for the other sports. Fortunately, this government is committed to developing those other sports. You get it. As to how we are tackling them, he is oh, there. I'm not, I'm he not, can, I'm he not, can I'm not, I'm fully support. I'm I know, I know, I know all. things are going, yeah, you know, mm. trying to build other, you know, training arenas for uh, <laughs> other sports too. It's important, mm. you get it. And we're encouraging people boxing. In fact, they did very well with that uh, book home sports arena. Mm. To be honest with you, I commend them uh, for that. So this government is also developing more football pitches. Uh, it's still football, right? <laughs> then we get the <laughs> swimming, uh, the ping pong, and then the other lesser sports that others, as he said, you know, disabled sports and go, you know, this. Yes, I watch your yes, TV yes. and most times mm -hmm. you bring those things up. So let's keep encouraging. They are about to, they are about to engage in qualifying series for yeah. Olympics. Olympics. There's, but, a, there's no budget for but that. But one thing I disagree with Honorable, especially <clears throat> he hasn't been a sports person. Uh, 
S. Not a football person, sports person. I'm happy with that. The supporter's idea. Yes. You see, yes, the supporter's idea. And then not being business. Yeah, it should be business. It cannot be business. Okay? We can have incorporate the business idea into it, but it's about the passion of the nation Sports and this drive. It's business, you know, well no, it's over. business. Well when over. it comes to the nationality, mm. yes. you get it. We are going there. Every Ghanaian, the, the satisfaction we derive watching our team doing well. Mm -hmm. Right. We cannot say it should be business. If the state must support them to be able to deliver, we ought to do that. Mm -hmm. And the state, the nation and its people will be happy and satisfied that government is committing uh, to supporting and developing so, 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 that so, the, the state so it can... shouldn't always be about profits that you make. Okay. So <laughs> the state cannot provide that environment for corporate Ghana to come in it and, can. and pick the it supporters can. up there. You know, he, it's, it, he, it can be done. In fact, the sports minister uh, and some of the sports presenters can come together and this will be easily done in fact the corporate uh, world will be willing to support uh, the football uh, uh, family and the sports he wants the sports generally okay. so uh, going forward let's tax them uh, as a select committee in parliament and then charge the uh, sports minister to incorporate the idea of seeking uh, corporate sponsorship for the national team uh, going forward, especially backing on such tournament. It's is a good it, one that I see. Okay. okay, right. As I'm talking to you now, wrap up for me. Do on you that. know that we are even owing the female team? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you know we are owing the female team? And look at the money we spent on only the black stars. We are not talking about under 20. We are not yeah. talking about the meteors. We are not talking about the black queens. We are not talking about black Starlet. princesses, the maidens. The you, you understand me? Yeah. The fixation with satisfying the black stars is just unbearable. It's not, it's not driven by the citizens. No, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I don't to see the black stars. Well, my, people, my, people will be too happy. my people will be too happy. My people will be too happy to see we developing swimming, we developing okay. hockey. Okay. Some of the best players yeah. in Ghana, in Ghana yeah. hockey have come from my constituency. Okay. The, you talk about the late Tonugle, Kesta Jaho, uh, uh, Kwe, you talk, all these people. I've come from my constituency, Frimpong, FM, all those guys. So we'll be happy. Mm. Hockey is also developed. Yeah. We'll be happy. Swimming is developed. We'll be happy. Boxing is giving more impetus. So that is what I want to see in this country. We must diversify sports. We cannot continue to put all And the black stars are not giving us the resource. And we continue to treat them like gods, <laughs> like Zeus. <laughs> It is unfair. But right. He okay. says something. The hockey. You know, we had some hockey speeches. Yes. Are they still training and practicing? <laughs> yeah, they well, are. Well, last time. Last time. Yeah, yeah, last time. Yeah. Right now, Ghana has moved to the, yeah. moved to the third best in Africa. Oh, okay. In hockey. hockey. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, after South Africa yeah. and Egypt. Okay. We are the best. We are beating yeah. Kenya now. Okay. They used to beat us. Yeah. We understand. In the female, we are even second. Okay. To South Africa. Okay. Let me tell you this. One of the things that worried me yesterday with the minister. The minister said something that I was so. In fact, I heard it on radio. I thought it was a joke. When he said the Yabane Yaba. You understand? <laughs> what does the civilization, Hana civilization started here. Oh, okay. Okay. Yesterday, he was saying that he told the whole country that that excursion was organized by calf. It's never. The, the minister committed perjury. Well, my that's, checks, that's an my checks, details, details my checks have shown too. that calf, you know, this is, it is, it is strange because you are not dealing with people who don't have any idea. But you, you are not in Egypt. Yeah. Were you? No, but you can immediately go to calf this thing and know whether calf was uh, organized a sketching for any national support group, no. any national team. Calf they don't. might, as of the time you were checking, they might not have published it, mm. right? So you need to get a mad or at, somebody say, to yesterday. tell you uh -huh, I found to, out. to check. And we have people in this country who are on CAF. They are serving on various CAF committees. And they will know. And they will tell you. CAF doesn't organize excursions for national team supporters when they are having tournaments. Maybe there's a substitution. This is the first time. So put the <laughs> minister to strict proof. That's all. Exactly the yes. point. That is the issue. I'm okay. saying that. That's what I'm saying that there are so many questions to be answered yeah. after this. No, okay. We are not just going to say he's come to tell us that he's be able to save one point something million. So we should clap for him. It is not right. Oh so, yeah. What he spent and where we got to was totally. Uh, let me say it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't add up. Because we cannot spend this huge amount of money on the black stars and end up coming home empty-handed. 
you know, with all the sort of things that happened. Even even before we cross this uh, barriers, we get the details. We, we are not uh, going to cross uh, it for the next two weeks. We, we, <laughs> we, we need to cross it because we'll be getting ready for Cameroon uh, yeah, in two years' time. Yeah, Let's, yeah. Uh, as uh, concluding remarks. That in, is why I think in, that I will uh -huh. be happy that if all of us, mm. as a country, we all agree that possibly there must be another commission to look at this and now the the outcomes of that this thing must be respected by all government and I, I wish I, no you see your your committee can do a good job there when, we can. when he brings if, the if, details if, if, yeah. if, if, if you see the issue is that if we do it if parliament do does that and 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 the executive will not respect it what happens what happens this is just an executive disrespect and lack of recognition to a commission report. But doesn't and Parliament and have the authority uh, uh, to question the, the works of the... Uh, you of see, what the minister, what the minister did yesterday, to, what the minister did yesterday so, uh, is a statement. Yeah. And in Parliament, statements have their uh, parameters. You okay. cannot debate. Okay. You cannot answer debate. If we have debated, we will have come to the end of some conclusions. But it opens the opportunity for further questioning of the Parliament. And I can assure you, we're going to line up questions. But you see, we have a Parliament where... Your, your, your question lies within the bosom of the speaker to be admitted. So if you file a question and, for example, we file a question... We have a very liberal speaker. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, please. Okay. If you okay. file a question and the speaker does not admit it, <laughs> it, won't, it, it won't be heard. Okay. Oh, no, you see, wrap up for me. Let, yeah, but see. I thought we were going to talk about University of Education. Uh, quickly, we're, yes, yes. We're, we're, we're wrapping up. Uh, I happen to be a former ISO I president. I think this there, conversation has so. just started with <laughs> yes. the black staff. Yes, yes. The, uh, the education minister said there's only one yeah. vice chancellor. I agree there, with you. Uh, Absolutely. There's confusion. I, you agree he, with him? Yes, he, he, he's right. The education minister is right. Is he taking sides in a case no. that is in court? No, he is it's the not. minister. The court has given a ruling. Mm. Which ruling favors the former uh, vice chancellor? Okay, mm. Professor they, Advocate. For Professor Advocate. When I was a student, he was he's one of the fast ri fastest rising uh, mm. lecturers that I, I admire him so much. Mm. You get it. They, they both uh, were my lecturers, so uh, I don't have the biases for any. Mm. But if a court is given a ruling, the processes for the implementation or enforcing of the ruling has a way for it to be done. You don't just say because the court has given a ruling, you are walking to the place, get out, I'm taking over. It is not done anywhere. It is not done. That's what the minister emphatically stated, that if you have any process that you think should be gone through, use, use it. Means. You get it. But until that is done, the vice chancellor of the University of Education is Professor, Reverend Father Professor uh, Afobroni, Anthony Afobroni. Let's do that. Prior Professor Avoke and the team should get the processes right. Okay. And when they so go they, through... they have the application. Yes. They should wait for the processes. That's all. Then they can be, if he has to go sit, take the chair, he takes it. Okay? Through the proper way. Otherwise, this will amount, as the minister said, trespassing and, and a coup d'etat or a coup de but, but if your court has ruled <laughs> that, uh, it has ruled restraining uh, the sitting VC from performing his duties... Shouldn't he also step aside? Good. So that one, that's why we are talking process. So court itself, will let the police or whoever to enforce uh, the ruling. There are some people that enforce court ruling. Mm. So let them go to serve him. That look, this is the ruling, and you are not to hold yourself mm. up this way. If you so hold yourself, it's contempt of court. Right. You get it, and then you can be punished. So when he gets this. He himself will advise himself and begin to uh, uh, conduct himself as such. So okay. for you, his, his uh, storming of the campus is what wrong. you find uh, totally wrong. Very wrong. <sighs> he has a good case, but he's uh, executing, executing it the wrong way. He's one of the lecturers I admire and professors I admire so much. Young. Yeah. Very dynamic. Let me let me let, let me say this. I, <laughs> and, and, you see, before he comes, I feel bad. As yeah. A member of uh, the alumni, a yeah. former council member. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then every day the news there is, you know, it's for the wrong it, reasons. Yeah. For the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, we are pleading with them, uh, uh, including the honourable member of parliament, uh, the vice chancellor, uh, council chair, and council members, and all lecturers and students to. Uh, come together and help so that the 
always the been tension. in the news. Yes, the, the tension president even appealed to them to, to we've come mend a long their ways. Way. And yet, yes, we've come a lot. Professor Joe right. Fusana Muhammad Sayenku did a lot for the university. You get it. This, it. It took a lot for us to get the recognition we are getting today. And so let's not take that recognition uh, from the public and the world for granted. Right. Me, please come now, now, now. <laughs> <laughs> You see, if the government decides to meddle in affairs of the universities, this is what we get. I've, I've, I've also been on campus for several years. And I'm saying that that's one of the reasons why I see a danger ahead of us with a new bill that government has introduced to parliament in a way of restructuring and recomposition of how the management of the university should be. It's seriously a threat to the autonomy of the university campuses. I see government indirectly putting the, and I think that. So you people in parliament have a duty. Yes, yes, and I, to, I, to and do a I believe I, I will want for this, if it is for dangerous. this, all of us who have gone to university education and have gone through the sort of administration we have in the universities mm -hmm. should, by partisan this thing, throw away this bill. It doesn't make sense. Already, the committee of vice chancellors have taken up against it. Academia have take, uh, taken up against it. Look, we saw what happened at the KNUST. And I believe that should have been a lesson to us. And then this one. Seriously speaking, in this in the alumni of the University of Education we never, will not be happy about what is happening. Mm. For a year and over. I don't know what is happening to even the students on campus. They, 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 you know, they're 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 in a, affected yeah, our yeah. alumni yeah, elections yeah, yeah, of yeah, our executives. Yeah. Ah, you see, yeah. so I, th I think seriously speaking, <laughs> um, people of that level, I do not expect people of that level to be behaving the way we are behaving because that, that, this is a pinnacle of education yeah. right. and of academia. And that, that respect... Do we need that a new trial as of now? <laughs> well, <laughs> well <laughs> I don't know. There, the whole Let me take some it. comments. Aisha is I think, back here with us. We, we, we should look at it and yeah. we should resolve this issue mm -hmm. as early as possible, possible and keep the sanity of the university campuses. Grateful. Aisha, good morning once again. Right, several comments on the Black Stars. We'll just go uh, through a few. And then we wrap up. Um, this is from Jagos from Insawam. He says, hey, so the sports minister is saying Ghana spent all this huge taxpayers' money on this black stars. Oh, my God. My country, Ghana, is sinking. Oh. Uh, then if the, uh, the black stars had lifted the cap, then all the money at the Bank of Ghana would have been giving out as budget for the tournament. So, Lord, please have mercy on these politicians. I mean, both NDC and MPP, because they are all the same. No difference at all. Um, if supporters help teams to win tournaments, then Germany, South Africa, and Brazil, etc., should have won the World Cup in 2006, 2010, and 2014, respectively. Even Brazil lost 7-1 to Germany at home ground. So it is a way to use state funds to sponsor supporters to any part of the world to cheer up any national team to victory. Asanko sent that one from Santa Maria. This one says, good morning, Bright. Are we serious in Ghana? Do we care about the citizens of the country? We occupy offices to develop or to enrich ourselves. How can we go to the AFCON with $6.3 million and end up spending $4.5 million when school children sit on the floor to learn when there are no beds, when there's hardship in the country, and so on? We think armed robbers are those who take our monies at gunpoint, but some of the politicians are armed robbers. Bright, my heart is bleeding. God is watching. Someone said, if we keep lamenting over the AFCON expenditure, they'll use the remaining $1 million to form a committee of inquiry and chop that one too. <laughs> Shagu from Nima sent that one to us. Um, this one say, uh, says, may I know if the budget of 6.3 million was for the entire tournament from group stages to finals? If yes, then I find it difficult to understand. The, the, okay. Uh, okay, let me finish this one. I find it difficult uh, to understand the savings the minister is talking about because Ghana exited at the 16th stage. Uh, this means if we were to reach the finals, we would have been spending twice the amount budgeted, too expensive. <laughs> Bad planning, Ghana the loser. This is coming from Sule from uh, Tamale. This one says forty-one thousand uh, dollars for just medicals. So who and who had kidney transplants in oh. Egypt? <laughs> <laughs> This one says the issue of uh, quoting money in dollars, especially by government officials, in fact, in parliament, is always a disgrace. You have no idea 
what it is doing to the people's minds. Uh, this one sent with no mm. name. Uh, we can't say from Kaswa says, uh, this, uh, these people don't have a conscience. Spending $4.5 million on only football, the NPP really came to chop money. And if Ghanaians don't open their eyes now, before we realize they have chewed even the bones left on Ghana. And the, uh, that's what he's saying. We can't say from Kaswa. This one says, good morning, TV3. We'll continue to give our support to the NPP government because they didn't buy coconut for 20 Ghana cities. Our brothers <laughs> think they can waste our time in Ghana here. <laughs> we are serious now. And you see that the NDC man cannot even do uh, the math well. <laughs> they st <laughs> they'll stay in opposition for a very long time. Nana Francis sent that one from Garu. Um, this one also says, the winning bonus, uh, the winning bonus, which match, uh, which match did they win? Hey, I'm a Ghana. Uh, are we that rich? This country is really bleeding because of this, um, these, the black stars. The last straw that broke the camel's back is the accommodation, $1 million and over. Why? Did they buy a plush apartment? Yes, we have a president who claims uh, he came to protect the public purse. You spend this to win a trophy of $4 million. This was just round of 16 shaking my head. So those are some of the comments. Give your comments, Kami. We'll read them. Uh, there was no kidney transplant in Egypt. The minister will give us all the details of what went into the figures. I'm grateful uh, for your Thursday morning. Uh, George Kujue, you see, is the Director of Communications at NADMU, a member of the NPP's communication team. Honorable Nidante Vandapo is MP for the Dudu constituency. I'm, I'm, I, know he, I'm, I didn't know he taught him in my school. Oh, yeah, he. Uh, and, yeah, and, I, I, thought, I thought not much. And he, he, no, he's uh, <laughs> his wife is a very good friend. Uh, you don't know his wife? No. Oh, okay. Baba Isi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You have said it. All right. I'm grateful for your time this morning. Oh. Have a wonderful I Thursday see. morning. Stay